on any time. Thank you, Council President. Okay, John, we're ready to go. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. We are on the record. Today is Monday, December 14th, 2020. This is a regular scheduled caucus meeting of the Jersey City Municipal Council in effort to adhere to social distancing protocols and best practices imposed by the city and state authorities. The city of Jersey City has canceled all public meetings and closed non-essential services as of March 16th, 2020 until further notice. As a result, this council caucus will be held virtually as a video conference with public access. We had a scheduled 4 p.m. start. The clock on my computer is showing 4.03 p.m. May I have a roll call for the commencement of this caucus? Councilperson Ridley. Councilperson Ridley. Is she frozen? She's frozen. Okay, I know she's here, so I'm gonna mark mm -hmm. her here. Councilperson Prinzeri. Here. Councilperson Baggiano. Yeah. Councilperson, oh, there is Councilperson Ridley. You there? Can you hear us? She's there. Okay. If not, you can just come back, come back in. Councilperson Soleil. Here. Thank you, Councilperson Solomon. Here. Thank you, Councilperson Robinson. He's not here yet. Not here yet. Okay. Councilperson Lavaro. Here. Councilperson Rivera. Here. And Council President Waterman. Here. Very good. We have eight council members in attendance at 4.03 p.m. Hey, Sean, I was having yeah. some connection issues. I don't know if you got me or not. I did. I actually marked you present, even though it, we seen your beautiful face. It was frozen. <laughs> so we marked you present anyway, okay? <laughs> Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, in addition, at its time of its preparation, the agenda of this meeting was similarly disseminated on Friday, December 11th, 2020 at 11.30 a.m. to the mayor, council, business administrator, and the newspapers, and posted on our website so I, so I can certify as to our total compliance with the Sunshine Law. Okay, council members, we have, before we go into our regular order of business, I believe we have a presentation that's going to be made regarding the Essex Hudson Greenway project. And we mm -hmm. have Deborah and Lauren on the line um, with us. And Deborah, if you want to give a little um, introduction for yourself and Lauren. You're mute, Deborah. Deborah, you're on mute. There you go. There, sorry about that. That's okay. Um, hi, good afternoon. Wanted to thank all the council members for having us today. I'm Councilman President Waterman. Uh, my name is Deborah Kagan. I'm the executive director of the New Jersey Bike and Walk Coalition. Uh, and today joining me will be also Lauren Rushing. Lauren is our community engagement and communications manager. Um, good afternoon. Thank you so much um, for giving us some of the time on your agenda today. We wanted to give you an overview of the Essex Hudson Greenway project, uh, which actually will come into uh, Jersey City when completed. Um, and to listen to any questions you have uh, today and give you an update as to the status to the project. Uh, so we have a, a brief slide presentation that I'm hoping will work this time. And then um, I'm happy to have uh, questions and answer at the end of it about the project. So let's see if this will work. I'm going to share my desktop. We, we were having some technical difficulties earlier, so um, yeah. Hoping that we can be able to see your shared screen, Deborah. Uh, I'm trying to share this at the moment. <gasps> and not having a lot of success. Are you all seeing it by any chance? 
Nope. No. No. no we, okay, oh. it's it's coming up now. Yes. No, we can see half of the screen, I think. Sean, what is all that stuff on the bottom of the computer? It says desktop window. Um, I'm not sure what you're seeing, Councilman. Well, half uh, of the people have cut out. Uh, we're, we're, I think everybody's having that issue, unfortunately. Bernadette is trying to uh, help us fix that. At, at this point, Deborah, can you just simply share your screen and go full screen on your presentation? Because I'm thinking maybe it'll resolve itself when you go full screen. Um, okay, I'm sharing the desktop. I don't see it. And to share full screen. Um, I'm clicking on the three buttons, but nothing's happening at the moment. Mr. Clerk, can you see me? I, I can see. Hey, Councilman Robinson, I'm going to mark you present okay. at 4.08 p.m. Thank you. I think I checked in last time as a guest or something because I could hear you guys, but I couldn't, you couldn't see me. No problem. Now we have nine council members at 4.08. We're all in-house. I did see it for a second, Deborah, and then it seems like it went away. Is there is there a way you can email it to me and I can share my screen? I can email it to you, Sean. Yeah. Email it to Sean. I'll do an introduction, Sean, while she's emailing. Yeah, that would be uh -huh. great. Fill up the council um, too much. Deb, is your computer hooked up to a monitor by chance, to a second monitor? No, not at the time. No, not, not. no. Okay. All right. Never mind then. You have the presentation. You want to email it to Sean? I will email it. I could also try sharing my screen. I don't know if it would work any better on my end. If you want to try, go Perfect. right ahead. That'd be great. Okay. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Okay. Um, if not, I'm going to ad lib. <laughs> yes, Deborah. Go ahead and ad lib. Go ahead and go on. Go on with the presentation. Try, try to ad lib as best okay. you can, Deborah, without okay. the presentation. There's some. Oh, there you go. Okay. Can, uh, can you can you all see it? Uh, yes. We can see yep. it, but you, if you could just hit the full screen version, that would be great. Have we got it now? Yes. There you go. Yeah. Oh, this okay. is, thank you, Lauren. And uh, my job. apologies, I don't know why I couldn't do it from my end. It was working like five minutes ago. Anyway, um, the uh, Essex, I don't know what you all know. I probably know uh, some members know some things, but I'll, I'll sort of give an overview, uh, assuming that uh, not everybody knows the background on the project. Um, this is the Essex Hudson Greenway. It is a linear park. Uh, for northern New Jersey. Uh, and next, Lauren, you're in control of that now, yeah. Okay. There are uh, three major partners to the team right now. Uh, the New Jersey Bike and Walk Coalition, uh, which is uh, my organization, uh, has been working on this project for many years, uh, along with advocates in most of the municipalities along the corridor. Uh, in the Open Space Institute, which is a national conservation leading uh, leader in the in the region. Uh -oh. and, yep, just lost it. That's all right. I know who the partners are. Uh, all right. And the 9-11 Memorial, uh, National Memorial Trail, uh, which is uh, an organization creating a trail connecting the memorial sites from 9-11 uh, through New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. Um, so I'm not seeing the slideshow, Lauren. Okay, I think I got knocked off by Bernadette, or I can try sharing again. Let's see. So the Essex Hudson Greenway is a is a proposed greenway um, that runs along the old Booten lines, eight point six miles, um, and it's really a project that we've been talking about for the area and dreaming about for uh, since the railroad stopped using that line. Um, for service, and that was around 2002. So this has really been almost 20 years in the making, this project. In 2014, uh, the New Jersey Bike and Walk Coalition, who had been building support uh, for a number of years, took this on as a major campaign, uh, got 
resolutions from most of the uh, communities and municipalities along the line. Uh, and we're negotiating to try to get the railroad to agree to sell the right of way. Um, the Norfolk Southern Railroad, which owns owns the property today, was not interested in selling till fairly recently, um, a few years ago. Uh, we brought on the Open Space Institute to negotiate a purchase and sale agreement. That purchase and sale agreement was signed this past July. Um, it was in negotiations from the beginning of the year. And we now have this uh, window of opportunity to keep the corridor intact uh, so that it will not be sold off individually. Next slide. Um, this is to give you uh, an overview of the towns that it goes through. Uh, it goes through Montclair, Glenridge, Bloomfield, Bellevue, across uh, Kearney, Northern Newark, across the Meadowlands, a uh, piece of Secaucus, and goes into Jersey City just north of General Square, and we'll show you a close-up of that map in a minute. So it's the two counties and eight, uh, eight towns and cities. Some basic facts uh, about the proposed greenway. It would bring approximately 135 acres of new green space uh, to the residents along these two counties. That's approximately a half a million residents, two of the most densely populated counties actually in the country. Uh, it would provide biking and walking as transportation alternatives. Um, for what's approximately 300,000 commuters. Um, it can incorporate uh, green infrastructure or environmental design to help mitigate uh, flooding. And as part of the purchase and sale agreement, uh, we also have the subterranean rights underneath the right of way, which will allow for the development of internet services of um, broadband infrastructure. Um, and it links to a number of uh, through trails in the area, which we'll also show you a map of in a minute. And most of the right of way is approximately 100 feet uh, right, uh, wide, most of, of the way. Next slide. So this project, this potential to have a greenway in this space really addresses a number of major benefit areas for the region. Um, certainly recently we have seen an increase uh, where people are walking and biking more, the need to get outside for essential exercise, both for physical and mental health. Um, and this will provide public open space through, as I said, two of these very dense uh, counties. In many areas, there is not easy access to open space or parks for this kind of recreation and exercise. It also would provide a critical and new transportation corridor for biking and walking uh, between the western suburbs and the, the eastern cities of the area. Um, there is nothing like this in the area. Um, it would be a continuous corridor uh, from Montclair all the way through to Jersey City and of course in Jersey City with the potential to connect to New York City. It reduces uh, car usage by providing this alternate uh, transportation and in so, uh, it reduces congestion, traffic, uh, and as a result, it also reduces air pollution for the area. There is a, a strong environmental um, benefit to this greenway. It would provide, uh, because it's intact and continuous, it provides a wildlife corridor. It provides space for rain gardens and bioswales for mitigating flooding, and the potential for tree coverage in areas where right now there is no tree coverage, um, and particularly in parts of, of Newark and some of the areas, uh, more industrial areas. So being able to plant new trees, to have um, natural plantings, to have bioswales, uh, creates this uh, green open space, um, both for recreation and transportation. A result of the of uh, the development of these kind of trails across the country has proven to be uh, a real catalyst for economic development in local business districts. Um, it brings in new people. It brings in new business. Uh, people want to go to restaurants. They want to um, rent bikes. They come in to explore the the towns. And the actual uh, 
properties that uh, are close to the Greenway all show an increase uh, in value sometimes uh, between and and the estimates are a little all over the place depending on the location of the trails, but somewhere between about five and 20% increase in property values. Next. This is a quick overview uh, of the diversity of the communities that will, this will go through. This particular uh, slide shows language other than English spoken at home, um, and you can see that there's um, large areas where there's over 50% uh, of la other languages than English spoken at home. So it really represents a, a very uh, diverse um, communities that we have in the area and would connect these communities uh, where there is not uh, an easy connection for transportation at the moment. Next. This is a map that shows access to schools. The blow up on the left is uh, the area around in Jersey City around Journal Square. The little green dots are schools. The medium green area is a quarter mile uh, from the center of the quarter and the lighter green is one mile. So you can see um, the potential for safe routes to school, for connectivity um, to the corridor, all the way across uh, all these different things. And I'll just uh, point out one other feature of this map. So the, the white circles with a little blue around them, and I can't do the pointer, sorry. Um, Can you see my <laughs> is where the railroad is at grade level or at street level. Um, and then it, it obviously goes uh, below grade level and above grade level uh, on a lot of the different places in Syria. OK, next. As I said before, it's on the average about 100 feet, but where it comes into to Jersey City near General Square, it's actually very wide. Uh, and one of the things uh, that this is important for, um, besides it gives space for all kinds of amenities. So uh, there's potential for playgrounds, for restrooms, for um, bike rents, for all kinds of things along uh, the corridor. And because it's so wide in, in certain areas, it also gives us uh, access to think about uh, doing CSO storage underneath the re the greenway and there have been conversations uh with a number of towns about the potential uh for space for cso storage and i believe jersey city is one of those what does cso mean sorry oh. uh, combined combined sewer overflow oh nice thank you the flooding waters right so that's a, a major problem in in a number of the of towns along the way, including Jersey City, Newark, and Kearney. So this has the potential to, to mitigate some of that flooding with some storage underneath. This is a little close up of the access point where it comes into Jersey City, so you can get a sense of where it is. Uh, crosses the Hackensack Bridge over the Meadowlands, uh, comes in just past Laurel Park up in Secaucus, and across this area near the creek, uh, just meeting at Van Curren. OK, next slide. As I mentioned before, you can get a sense of the importance of this corridor to a whole network of trails in the area, and in particular, the trails that go through Jersey City. So um, we have been in conversation and are aware of the Bergen Arches, uh, and the embankment projects uh, that are proposed and of interest in the city. And recently um, heard Mayor Fulop talk about that potential for Jersey City. There are also other trails in the area, including the Mill Creek Trail, the Hudson River Waterfront, um, the East Coast Greenway, the Moros Canal. So the East Coast Greenway and the 9-11 Trail are all looking at uh, using the Essex Hudson Greenway as a major corridor to go through this area. Next. Again, this is a close up just to give you an idea of how close it would be to the Bergen Arches and to Journal Square. Next. And this is um, 
just a, a small piece of the um, the proposed Jersey City bicycle network. And again, you can see the potential for connectivity here um, to your whole bike network. Next. This is a, a visual rendering, just an idea of what might be possible. Uh, we have no design plans in the making yet. We are just really focused on uh, an acquisition phase, um, which I'll talk about in a minute. But you can see here uh, some of the features that we were just talking about, biking and walking pathways, areas to sit and gather, um, potential for, for art projects, um, bioswales on the left, tree coverage, and the potential underneath to have uh, internet infrastructure. Next. This is another rendering with a vision. Um, this particular rendering is um, from Newark. You can see the Tiffany Tower in the back, but it's an idea of what it can look like going through a more urban section uh, of the Greenway and the potential to have new park space, again, to have a real uh, open space for, for community uh, gathering, for walking and biking uh, as well. Next. And here's another vision uh, vision rendering that as it goes over the Meadowland, there's a really beautiful area that it goes over. Um, it's uh, difficult to get out there right now. It is it's the property is is still owned by the railroad, so we're not encouraging people actually to walk on it. But this is to give you another idea of the potential to connect to some of the natural spaces that are so close to Jersey City, but difficult uh, for people to actually uh, enjoy. So the connection to, to trail networks that are in the Meadowlands, to um, water recreation, as well as to biking and walking. It's just a, it's actually a very beautiful space once you're out there. Next. So let's talk a little bit about the um, status of where the project's at. Um, the purchase and sale agreement that was signed uh, with Norfolk Southern this year was for one year. Uh, with the ability to have an extension going into next year if there's significant progress shown. Um, there, there is a price tag for um, that was agreed on with the purchase and sale agreement. Uh, and the railroad has since uh, secured official abandonment status. What that means is uh, because railroads are quite complex, uh, there's a lot of regulations, federal regulations, in order for them to stop being used as rail line. Uh, and that's the abandonment process. They have gotten permission from the National Surface Transportation Board for abandonment. What that means is um, they now have the ability uh, to legally sell any part of this quarter. What's keeping the quarter intact right now is the agreement uh, with the Open Space Institute that this would be uh, bought from the, the railroad that it would be turned into a greenway um, and uh, a multi-path greenway and uh, that it would be owned by the counties together. So by county ownership of Essex and Hudson. Um, if the agreement is not completed to purchase it and that the counties do not take on that responsibility, then that agreement would um, lapse and the railroad would be able to sell off pieces uh, to any kind of development they wanted. And we would basically lose what is a once in a lifetime ability uh, to keep this corridor intact. So there are engineering studies, and environmental studies that are going on right now. Um, and uh, you, of course, uh, know that Essex and uh, Hudson County, at least, has passed uh, general resolutions of support. That was at the end of September, beginning of October. So where we are at now um, is we are uh, in conversations right now with elected officials and key stakeholders um, in the region to put together a funding uh, package that will not tap into any COVID-related uh, funds uh, that would be from the state and that will help uh, the counties to be able to actually complete the acquisition. So next slide. 
We see this as a, a, a brief window of opportunity before the uh, Open Space Institute purchase and sale agreement lapses. So we have been working very hard uh, to make sure that the county commissioners and county executive hear from constituencies across all of the municipalities, uh, including Jersey City. Uh, we've been doing presentations and working with different groups and um, beginning a real campaign of community engagement and outreach. There is um, a uh, letter of support, a digital letter of support on the Essex Hudson Greenway website uh, that people have been signing. And there have been over 1,400 uh, letters that have been sent, the digital letters sent to the county commissioners and executives. So at this point, we're also encouraging anybody um, who supports this project. And we're, we've are we been encouraged by the conversations that have been going on um, with elected officials. And we are encouraging everyone, including uh, municipal and local officials, to contact not only the county executives and commissioners, but also Governor Murphy, since this is a um, major project that impacts the region and the state as a whole, to show support. So basically, the letter of support says we thank them for passing resolutions of support, uh, and we're encouraging them to continue this process uh, where uh, funding will be secured and they will be able to take on actual ownership uh, from the Norfolk Southern Railroad for the complete right of way. Next slide. So this is the um, uh, website. Sorry, there's a little glitch in the format there, but it's the Essex Hudson Greenway org website. There's great drone footage of the whole project. You can go look at there's lots of information. Um, we encourage you to go to that site and any of the social media uh, from the site for updates on the project uh, and to go to the support site show and show your support. Um, next slide. So we are doing, uh, as I said, we're looking to do further community outreach. We have uh, made some contacts with some of the neighborhood associations in Jersey City uh, uh, that Lauren can give more specifics on if we want to hear which ones. And we are interested in hearing uh, and working with you to do further outreach in the community in Jersey City. Uh, this is both to let people know that the project, uh, where, where status it is at and what its potential is, but also very important as we move from acquisition into the planning and design phase, how important it is to hear from your constituencies uh, what they want for this project. This uh, has the potential to have all kinds of amenities, um, to have opportunities for community identity through cultural programming and art. And it's really uh, critical that people know about it and have their voices heard so that it actually does reflect what the community wants for the project. So that's the overview. Um, and we can leave the slideshow. Those are, by the way, um, those are both of our emails please feel free to contact me directly with any further questions. Um, and again, the best way to, to sort of keep up to date is to follow the Essex Hudson Greenway website. So thank you um, for sitting through that. And I'm more than happy to uh, answer a few questions. Uh, you have any more time on your agenda for this. So thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Thank you, Deborah. Any questions? Council? Um, Sorry, Council was this Minsoleo. sent to us? Go ahead. W was this uh, presentation sent to us? No, but there oh. is a similar presentation on the website. Under news, we did do a presentation to the Essex County uh, commissioners and a very similar slideshow is online at the website. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will just uh, make one more comment, which is part of the support is that a number of municipalities have signed general uh, resolutions of support. 
as well mm -hmm. as the county. And we have uh, a draft copy of that, which we'd be happy to share with you uh, if the council. So Lauren, we can send um, Council President Warren the, mm -hmm. the draft resolution. Right. And that, that's a good way as a whole to just pass a general resolution of support at your next meeting. Joyce, uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, just a couple sure. of concerns. Number Go ahead. one, Go ahead, the, safety, the safety going through all these towns, especially at night. The money, where the money's coming from. Uh, our association over here, which a good part of it is in the Hilltop and Journal Square, nobody's ever contacted us. I'm all for it, I believe me. And the other thing is uh, um, the cemetery. They presented a pr presentation a few years ago uh, where they're going to come in back of the Hossama Cemetery. And under there are Revolutionary War graves. So if it, the embankment goes through, they're going to have to change the direction of which they're going because they're not touching those Revolutionary War cemeteries, graveyards down there. So uh, I wish you, uh, you would get a hold of me and the Hilltop and uh, we can discuss some of this, all right? But I'm all for it. I think it's a great idea. I think it'd be really nice if it, when it's completed. Uh, I assume it's going to be a number of years, though, in the future. Yeah, but but we've been waiting quite a few years. If it if the project goes through with the funding, then planning could actually start within about a year. All right, good. So it may not be as long as you may think. Uh, right, my concern is safety up there and. The cemetery down back below where those graveyard, the graveyard is of the Revolutionary War soldiers. Is that by the embankment? Is that what you're talking about? Yes, yes. This is is not part of the embankment? No, um, not yet, but it will be. It could connect to it, but the issues around what you're talking about really would be part of the embankment uh, jurisdiction. All right. Okay. A, All right. So Deborah, we, um, Deborah, just reach out to my offices and I'll connect you with um, Councilman um, Bojani to um, set up a meeting with Hilltop because he's he's responsible for Hilltop and I, I think it's going to affect that area pretty much. So they should know what's going on. OK, yeah, we'd be very happy to. Thank you. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Nice sure. presentation. Thank you. Anyone else? No. OK, Sean. Okay, thank you, Deborah and Lauren. Thank you, Deborah and Lauren. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Safe. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Alrighty. Okay, now to our regular scheduled business. Uh, the first reading ordinance I have is item 3.1, City Ordinance 20 107, uh, an ordinance of the Municipal Council of the City of Jersey City adopting the Central Avenue Block 20, excuse me, 2901 redevelopment plan. I believe that, um, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, John uh, Metro, are we uh, withdrawing, or Tanya? We yeah, we asked to withdraw this. Okay. So this will go on um, on a future meeting. Okay. So we, we are withdrawing item 3.1, so we're going to go move on to item 3.2, City Ordinance 20-108, an ordinance Rescinding number one, ordinance 12 149, ordinance 12 150, ordinance 12 151, and ordinance 12 152, and terminating the tax exemptions and financial agreements with BR Mercury Urban Renewal Company, LLC, BR Opium Urban Renewal Company, LLC, BR Paramount Urban Renewal Company, LLC, and BR Tower. Urban Renewal Company, LLC. Any questions or comments? Okay, hearing none. Item 3.3, City Ordinance 20-109. It's an ordinance establishing the Arts and Cultural Trust Fund to create funding sources for the arts organizations in the city of Jersey City. Any questions or comments? Do I have a quick question, Captain Solomon? Uh, sure. I just wanted to understand. This is just simply creating that kind of fund for the organization for for the money to sit in. Um, it, it doesn't do anything more than that. That's correct. Correct, okay. Councilman. Uh, this will be able to establish the trust fund, 
and then uh, the rate will be struck annually by resolution. OK, so uh, do we have to set that in the first meeting in January or do we have more time on that? No, we, we have more time with that because uh, first and second quarter estimates went out, so it'll be adjusted accordingly. Yep. Yeah, understood. OK, thank you. Any other questions or comments? So, so does this um, is the rate already established or I, I, I'm sorry if I missed that. No, the rate is not yet established. Um, we've been uh, working as a committee to set the parameters in place for um, the distribution of the funding in addition to the rate itself that will come as John had mentioned via resolution. Um, this just creates the funds. It also uh, creates the fund itself and then it, it signals to the state that we're going to be creating this fund. Um, and it's best to do it this way. It's to the maximum amount that the state statute allows. It's set by resolution to give you flexibility to change the rate should you so desire somewhere along the line without having to go back and amend the ordinance. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Item number 3.4, City Ordinance 20-110, an ordinance supplementing Chapter 332, Vehicles and Traffic, Article 2, Traffic Regulations, Amending Section 332-5, One-Way Streets of the Jersey City Code to convert Baldwin Avenue to one-way northbound. Any that, questions or comments? Yeah, that I believe is going to look to be pulled until uh, further discussion. We're looking to pull this. Uh, I believe so. Let's see between now and Wednesday. Uh, there has to be uh, more communication and uh, you know, I'm not against it. I just want to make sure that the people, the community knows about it and, and it's presented. And uh, I already spoke to the mayor before about it, so. Okay, well, we'll just need to know before Wednesday. Uh -huh. All right. For advertising purposes, I appreciate it, Councilman. All right, item 3.5. So, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so, sorry. So is that going to continue or is that the, is there an administration response to that request? Well, I think uh, as of now, I would say it's going to be pulled and has to be brought to the, uh, we need further information on it and, the, and notifications throughout this whole area. I, I, I agree with you, Rich, but I'm just asking if the administration is Affirming yeah, well, that, or I, that yeah. The, um, yeah, I think they agree with it, and uh, you know, we're uh, we're going to sit down, and we have to let the people know, and letters are going to go out to uh, everybody that's involved in this whole area. Uh, oh, so, so let me let me be more pointed. Uh, Mr. Metro, as the acting business administrator, is the is the administration going to be withdrawing this for future consideration? Uh, Councilman, we're gonna we're gonna work with Councilman Borgiano, but at this point, we're not pulling it okay. from the from the uh, from the agenda. Um, but if if it does get pulled, we will notify everybody uh, before Wednesday, of course. Understood. So there you go, Rich. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. On to item 3.5, City Ordinance 20-111, an ordinance amending Chapter 321 Trees of the Jersey City Code. The city of Jersey City. Any questions or comments? Okay. Can someone explain this one? Just, is there someone here to speak on this and explain what we're doing here? Yeah, I can speak on this. So this came out of the work of the Shade Tree Committee. Um, one of the first things that they had discussed when we got together was to make some couple of amendments to the chapter itself. Um, they're pretty general. Uh, there's a little, a few language changes, and then the bulk of um, the requests that are coming from the committee uh, will be um, coming before council uh, via resolution as we work on the forestry standards. And when you say they're pretty general, what 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 are the changes to street tree uh, to the tree section of the city code? I'm looking at. Uh, Councilman, all of the changes are included with the attachment. It's not in the body of the ordinance, but the attachment spells it out and all the changes are marked in red. Yep, so the, the forestry standards shall be written and updated uh, with consultation to the committee. That was something that was very important to us. Um, we changed um, permitting um, like the like language of like a stump to a trunk or tree. 
Um, we changed um, in the preamble. Um, we eliminated climbing city trees with spikes to just climbing city trees, period. Um, let's see, just a uh, little language like that. Um, referencing back to the forestry standards because that's where the bulk of the information for anybody who's going to be doing any um, work in trees with permitting application and the like is going to be uh, sent to go. Um, we've changed some of the, the notices for the removal of trees um, and as it relates to notification. Um, let's see what else. Um, we've also changed the, um, the violation and penalties fee for I believe it's up to $200. Currently it stands at $100. Um, Per violation, and then um, again, most of this is referencing back to the forestry standards. Okay. 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 Any other questions or comments? Okay. Item three point six, City Ordinance twenty one one two, an ordinance of the City of Jersey City Municipal Council adopting amendments to the Land Development Ordinance, Chapter three forty five, Article three, Section. 17 traffic impact analysis and section 18 visual impact analysis any questions or comments it's just a, a quick question from uh to, i guess the planning is could you guys just briefly um explain how these changes will be different just i guess give us a real world example of of the impact of changes. sure so um right now um the way the the languages and the ordinance is written is that uh, first of all it's written that a traffic analysis is required at the discretion basically of the division director not a requirement at all it's very much at the discretion of the planner and or uh, the division director so this changes that to make it a requirement pretty much all of the time the only exception would be a minor site plan um, and that's 5,000 square feet uh, that's not proposing any parking. So that's the, the first part of that. The second part of this is that it really kind of updates what we've really been doing more and more, especially within the journal square plan, which is trying to incorporate traffic studies instead of just doing counts um, and, and, you know, how many trips somebody's going to make, but actually looking at the pedestrian realm, um, the bike uh, and vision zero. And so now the requirements that we've added ask the person who's reviewing it to go specifically to those studies and to cite whether or not um, it's a high impact zone, for example, um, and whether they need to uh, build more of the bike lane. That's a, that's a little bit more of a, a more easy one to grasp onto. Or if they need to make pedestrian improvements to make it a little bit safer, whether they need to build an island a little bit further out um, or yeah, site triangle. So really what this does is that it it enforces something that should have always been enforced, makes it a little bit more clear, especially if you don't want to do it. It's not just myself who will say yes or no, but it's also engineering and the um, division director for the traffic engineering who really has much more um, experience in this than I do. Um, and it also really brings back into the studies that we've all been you know that you guys have been talking about for the past couple of years now um so it's a much more holistic study because obviously like in journal square for example i know i keep pointing to this but you've got units buildings with hundreds of units and no parking but we all know that there's going to be an impact with drop off with loading um and whatnot and this plan really make takes forces a, that the study to take those into consideration and if there are red flags write mitigations for it um that's really it. The other one is a, a shadow analysis. And right now we have no requirements for shadow analysis. But if you've been involved in any application, you do know that more than free, more than enough that gets requested. So we, we codified it and we basically wrote out uh, requirements, things that we've seen specifically within New York, how New York requires it. Um, and so it provides a, a skeleton now, I think, and it'll, for commissioners will be able to really um, I think make better judgment calls when they're looking at these analysis. That's very helpful. And and so this happens just at the site plan. Is that the timing of it where these analysis would come in? Yep. Um, I believe the uh, yes. Uh, so I but I do believe that the shadow study is triggered by. Let me just take a look. I think it's for buildings that are um, 40 feet or higher. Great. Thank you. That is correct.
Okay, sure. Okay, any question? Any other questions or comments? Okay, hearing none, moving on to our next item, 3.7, City Ordinance 20-113, an ordinance supplementing Chapter 175, food handling establishments, regulating the fees charged to restaurants by third-party takeout and delivery service applications and internet websites during such times when the restrictions upon such fees imposed by state law are suspended. Any questions or comments on this ordinance? Okay, no questions or comments, but Councilperson Solomon, I just want to confirm on this ordinance, we are going, you are directing me to advertise this ordinance for a second reading for January 3rd, correct? Yes, if the council uh, agrees, and just so everyone is uh, uh, understands the context, uh, the these uh, fee caps would uh, replace the ones that are going to expire at the state level, and we would like to put them in uh, as close to the expiration of the state caps as possible. Uh, so we wanted to our next formal meeting would be January 4th for the reorganization. Mm -hmm. so, uh, if the council agrees, would put them on for second reading on January 4th uh, to enable them uh, to come into to effect sooner rather than later. And I should add, I also received an email from the law department uh, at, uh, like an hour ago with a, a non-substantial language change, which I'll forward to the council. Okay, will we have that change uh, prior to Wednesday? Yeah, they, 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 they sent it to me, so I have it. I, I will just forward it oh. to group. Okay, great. So then um, if you can send it to me as soon as you can, um, that would be great so we can incorporate it into the ordinance. So then when we do advertise it for um, second reading, it will be advertised in full with that uh, minor change in there. Yep. Thanks, Councilman. Thank you. Anyone else with any questions or comments on the ordinance? Okay, hearing none, on to our last second, uh, excuse me, first reading ordinance, item 3.8, City Ordinance 20-114. An ordinance of the Municipal Council of the City of Jersey City adopting amendments to the Exchange Place North Redevelopment Plan regarding the addition of research testing laboratory uses. Any questions or comments on this ordinance? Okay, hearing none. Moving on to our second reading ordinances, item 4.1, City Ordinance 20-101, an ordinance of the City of Jersey City and the County of Hudson, New Jersey, providing for a special emergency appropriation of 13 million, providing for the payment of contractually required severance liabilities resulting from layoff or retirement of employees. Any questions or comments? Okay. Item, I'm just going to keep going until somebody interrupts me. Four, item 4.2, City Ordinance 20-102, an ordinance amending Chapter 254, Property Maintenance, Article 6, Minimum Standards for Basic Equipment and Facilities, Section 254-27, Heating Facilities, Duty to Supply Heat, to amend the regulations on boiler inspections. So um, I was discussing with the Lord Department on this, we didn't get a chance to incorporate the all of the changes that were attached to the ordinance um, in uh, in word, in red into uh, the actual ordinance, but we'll have that done before the council meeting. I spoke to uh, Nick Strausser in the law department and between him and I, we'll work on getting those changes all incorporated in the ordinance so it makes it easier for any member of the public or the city council members to um, to see it and it'll make it much easier for my codifier if the ordinance does get adopted. Okay, next we have item 4.3, City Ordinance 20-103, an ordinance adopting amendments to the Morris Canal Redevelopment Plan regarding the creation of the Berry Lane Park North Zone, AKA 417 Community Port Avenue. Any questions or comments on this ordinance? I have comments and questions. Okay. And I'll defer to the Councilman, Board of Councilmen, if he has other comments beforehand. 
None. Okay. So, so council members, um, I'm going to try to be brief um, here, but uh, I think up until today's meeting, um, I think the, the question of amending the Morris Canal redevelopment plan and uh, redeveloping the, the steel technology site has largely been framed as including with myself as to what is the package of community benefits that the city is uh, receiving in return and whether such a return to the city was adequate. Um, the big return for the city presumably has been the, the 25,000 square foot recreation center. Um, however, I think the, the question of re redeveloping uh, the steel technology site should be looked through at a different lens. Um, I think the question is not whether we should get more affordable housing, um, although I've been a big proponent of that, whether the rec center should include more of a build out or how many years should the affordable rents be. Um, I've come to another conclusion um, after doing some additional research. And I think rather the question needs to be asked is whether the city should abandon our plans to build out and extend Berry Lane Park. Um, I know when I say that, uh, I'm sure you've read the, the letter issued by the JCRA executive De director that was included with the ordinance that's dated September 29th, 2020, um, that was addressed to the council president and to the chair of the, the planning board. And it asserts that, quote, the steel technology site was never part of the original plans for Berry Lane Park. That it was simply, quote, an add-on, or quote, or something, quote, nice if the city could acquire it, but not necessary. Uh, but after doing some research, uh, I, I will posit to you and put to you that the facts don't support uh, this assertion. Uh, the steel technology site was always envisioned to be a part of Berry Lane Park. Uh, the Morris Canal CDC has championed that vision. And when this project was first introduced to the community back in March of 2020, and I was at that community meeting by happenstance, uh, Morris Canal residents have argued and asked why the city had chosen not to build out the park. So I would ask you, the question is, why are we abandoning that vision? If we have vote to approve these amendments, the council will actively engage in disregarding the community's history and role in the redevelopment and vision of their community. So why is my conclusion different than the JCR executive director? And I want to take uh, very briefly to go walk through um, some of the uh, uh, and share some documents with you that uh, um, will support my assertion here. Um, so if you give me one second, I'm going to bring them up. Did you we, did you meet with Councilman Robinson on this too? I have not. OK. Um, but um, I'm, I'm going to share with you uh, th there's a series of documents that um, uh, I believe um, you'll probably receive in your emails if you haven't received it already, not from me, but from uh, uh, the Morris Canal community. Um, but I, I want to point to one which I just which I, I just found today. OK, and that uh, that document, if you give me a second, I'll be able to bring it up. OK, so it's um, resolution 18-686, uh, which this city council approved on July 18th, 2018. So everyone on this council, with the exception of Councilman um, Soleil, um, was party to this uh, resolution. And this is a resolution authorizing the execution of a revised Green Acres project agreement with the state of New Jersey, Green Acres program for Berry Lane Park and acquisition. Does everyone see the document that I'm sharing? Yes. Okay. So uh, I'll, I'll share this. And literally, I just received this uh, at about uh, 3.30 today um, and was able to obtain this document and was able to find this. Um, and what it did is it, it awarded us a million dollars to fund the Berry Lane Park acquisition. And if you go down to the grant project agreement, this was approved and has been signed and um, by the Mayor Stephen Fulop. Um, and it clearly shows that to be acquired um, by the city, uh, formerly block 2010, lots C17 and C18, now block 18901, lots 23 and 29. That's this area here of uh, page two of this document or page five of the entire 32 page um, resolution. Um, and that's block 18901, lots 23 and 29 are in fact the steel technology site. So as of July of 2018, the city um, was had plans to acquire this property and in fact received and was awarded a million dollars towards that end. And if you check um, other documentation around this, uh, the, the state in, in order awarding these DEP dollars uh, had required the city to do a 
an appraisal, essentially, and they certified the appraisal, which came in at $3 million. Still more than the million dollars, but the city had contended in their application, essentially, that we would be able to come up with the money and be able to pay for the acquisition and, and receive this grant. Um, and so, so it begs the question as to like what happened from July 2018 that uh, we decided that we didn't want to, to continue to move forward with this. You know, the 25,000 $25, square foot recreation center is great, a uh, great idea to have a recreation center. I don't think anyone argues with that, the idea of needing it and wanting a recreation center for the community. Um, the idea of a business incubator also warranted and, and has value as well um, for the community at large. Uh, but the, the zoning as it stands today with industrial allows for us to build those things and it allows for eminent do domain because it envisioned the idea of actually building a recreation center on the entire three, three acres, whether it encompassed the entire three acres, it would be open space and a recreation center would be a part of that. So instead of having a 25,000 square foot, um, we have the opportunity for eminent domain and to be able to acquire this property for ourselves that we that we had already, already taken action towards doing. and. And with this action, with, with these potential amendments, we'll be eventually ending that and ceasing that, that whole process and, and abandoning the community and the vision around that. And, and abandoning the idea of 130,000 square feet of recreation space with possibly 25,000 to 75,000 of that being recreation center or something else even more, who knows exactly um, what the actual design and, and thoughts were at the time to, uh, to, to draw that out. I'm, I'm actively trying to seek out if there were drawings and. Um, brought up already around this uh, around the site. Um, I'm going to point to something else and just um, um, and I urge you to consider that and uh, and that we consider tabling this um, as a result um, and then begin a conversation. I think I think what's what's justified and what's necessary is to actually re reach out to the community and have that conversation about whether it makes sense um, to continue with this vision um, in, th in that regard or are we looking for something else as a result rather than kind of imposing upon them. Um, the last thing I'm going to point out, if, 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 the, if the morality of the, of the idea doesn't uh, necessarily um, move you, um, I'm going to ask that uh, point out on page, uh, at the bottom of page six, it talks about uh, section five, land use restrictions on this Green Acres grant. And if you carry over to page seven, um, it talks about uh, the local government unit uh, that received the Green, Green Acres funding shall not convey, dispose of, or divert to a use for other than recreation and conservation purposes any lands held by the local government union for the purposes at the time of receipt of, at the time of receipt of Green Acres funding unless the local government unit obtains prior approval from the commissioner and the state house commission. So my question posed to um, the administration, to our business administrator, and to the law department is have we obtained um, permission from approval from the commissioner and the state house commission um, with regard to the disposal of this Green Acres grant or reallocating it for another purpose um, outside of this before we before we commence with these sort of actions around that. Um, I would suggest to you that if we haven't, and I would uh, ask the law department to look into this, that uh, taking such actions at this point um, could be uh, in violation of this Green Acres agreement and, uh, and there could be penalties with regard to that in terms of what, what the other monies that we received uh, from the state as it pertains to this uh, this particular project. And we'd possibly be opening ourselves up to litigation as well. Um, that, that's um, my, I'm happy to talk to Councilman Robinson. As I said, I just obtained this documentation. Happy to speak with you, Councilman, um, as well as the mayor and, and the developer on this matter. But I really think it needs to kind of go back to the drawing board and to allow the community to be uh, an integral part um, and a partner as they had been from 2008 uh, moving forward. And I have other documentation that I'll, I'll share with you, but um, I don't want to belabor the point. Uh, but uh, we've had multiple presentations that I found um, from the JCRA actually asserting um, to us on April 21st of 2014 at the City Council Caucus that in fact we uh, had a presentation from the JCRA with explicitly making it clear to the City Council, at least to myself, uh, Council President Waterman, Councilman Rivera, and Councilman Borgiano, uh, that the Steel Tech uh, site was part of the acquisition and part of the development of Berry Lane Park. Um, so that I will uh, yield the rest of my time and open it up for a conversation if anyone wants to comment on that, but I'd ask you to consider that as you move to a second reading. Any comments, questions? Anyone? Yeah, can I ask a question? Do, do we know what happened to that Green Acres funding? 
Uh, did, did, was it received? Is it sitting in an account? I mean, does the, can the administration kind of tell us where that money is and, and what can be done with it? Uh, yeah, Councilman, I, this is, you know, obviously, so I'm not sure <laughs> the particulars around this, but I'll have our CFO uh, definitely do a review and, and a legal review as well um, to make sure that we're in compliance with, um, you know, what Council Amin Lavara has presented. And if not, we'll, we'll obviously express that as well. Okay, great. And then we see with the vote coming up on Wednesday. I mean, the, the earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the priority, of course. Yep. Okay. Someone else? <clears throat> Okay, Sean. Already. Okay. On to our next item, which is 4.4 City Ordinance 20-105, an ordinance amending Chapter 175, food, ha food handling establishments, Article 3, food establishments, and Chapter 160, fees and charges. Section P, Chapter 175, food handling establishments to allow to farmers markets to operate year round. Any questions or comments on this ordinance? I'm, I'm here if anyone has any questions. It's, you know, directly related to the need to continue to support alternate ways for people to get food resources um, given the pandemic. Hi, Sean. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Mm -hmm. Okay. No. Okay, thank you. Um, going on to item 4.5, City Ordinance 20-106, an ordinance supplementing, supplementing, excuse me, Chapter 332, Vehicles and Traffic, Article 9, Parking for the Disabled of the Jersey City Code, designated reserve parking space at various locations throughout the, the city. Any questions or comments on this ordinance? Okay, hearing none, moving on. We have our public request for a hearing. And next we have our petitions and communications items 6.1 through 6.29, I believe. Any questions or comments? Okay, um, Office of Communications 7.1, any questions or comments? And we have our report of directors items 8.1 through 8.2. Any questions or comments? And then we have our claims, claims one and claims number two, which is the Medicare expenditure approval report. Any questions or comments? Okay, hearing none, moving on to our resolutions. Item 10.1, resolution 20-836 is a resolution authorizing the insertion of a special item of revenues and appropriations in calendar year 2020 municipal budget pursuant to NJSA 40A semicolon 4-87. Item 10.2, resolution 20-837 is a resolution authorizing calendar year 2020 appropriation transfers. Can I uh, ask on this one 10.2 sure. uh, for the uh, BA, uh, can you just describe, you know, there, there's some Couple transfers that are anything over a hundred thousand. I think there's a couple. Can you just kind of briefly describe why those are necessary? And you correct me if I'm wrong, but these are basically, you know, uh, adjustments to the budget we passed over the summer. Correct. So uh, this will be adjustments for the uh, yeah. Correct. It's uh, adjustments for year end pursuant to the uh, finalized adopted budget. Okay. Um, I do have Kyle on uh, who actually uh, prepared this. Kyle, are you available? Yep, I'm here. Okay, so if you could just go over for the councilman anything uh, in excess of 100,000 and kind of what we're doing with it. Okay, so I'll just I'll just start from the top for the uh, DPW director's office. That is a, um, a a bill we have for our HCIA tipping fees. Um, the next one down in this bill rank. Sorry, that sorry, is no, I, didn't, I didn't hear you there. A HCIA fees. Yeah, HCI tipping fee. I believe it, it is. Um, that's for that. Is that what we get charged to, to at the dump for our trash? Yeah, it's it's, a, it's the uh, the the additional dump fee. What we do, councilman, is we kind of uh, uh, guesstimate every year, if you will, uh, what the number is going to be. And um, it was it was trending ninety to one hundred and ten thousand uh, um, a month over. So uh, this is basically the, the last installment that we'll be paying. Is that 
because we uh, we're, we're just throwing away more trash or did yeah, it's, it's based on tonnage councilman. Yeah. OK, interesting. Yeah. All right. So, sorry. Thank you. Probably Can I just ask about that, Councilman? Um, so, so is that our, our city trash or? Um, <laughs> excuse me. It, it, it's overall, uh, yeah, it's, it's overall pickup from the vendor and, and, and disposal. I mean, is that just like our, our government trash or is that? Uh, no, it's citywide. Citywide, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can we get the actual numbers there too for that? Um, sure. Like you said, they're trending over, but uh, can you? Break down how much was budgeted yep. and how much was actually um, no spent. Yeah. Yep. Got it. So the next one is municipal rent. Um, that is money we actually just found out recently. We had to pay to uh, for the Jackson Square building. Um, Liz can speak more to it if you have any more questions. Um, that is for November and December for um, that building. Uh, the next one is for insurance. I'm sorry, is that November, December of 2020? Yes. Five so we budgeted, we were two months short in budgeting. Is that what you're saying? It, it, uh, it's, it's the first installments of the new building, I believe, right, Kyle? Yeah, so when we got the, the budget numbers for the rent account, um, for whatever reason, I guess they weren't anticipating starting payments for this pro uh, property until 2021. But uh, as it turned out, we had bills for November and December. Uh, and we kind of just found about recently in October um, through. Um, Greg Corrado that we had to pay these or we would default on the, uh, the payment. OK, I'll provide you a breakdown of everything that we budgeted for and the, the property mm -hmm. and the annual rent for each and you'll, you'll be able to uh, identify the shortfall there for that. OK, okay. Um, the next one is for insurance for citywide uh, expenses. That is just to replenish for you know some anticipated uh, settlements that we had to pay throughout the first three quarters. Uh, this should be able to get us through the uh, the fourth quarter of the year for any outstanding um, bills that we have. Uh, the next one for building and street maintenance that is for our um, Tempco contract for janitorial services. So like this is for additional cleanings that aren't getting reimbursed through any CARES Act funding. So this is city for cleaning wide um, buildings and offices. Um, the next one is recycling. That is 130,000 for a Sims Metal and all, all American contract for commingled materials and paper products. Um, the next one is, um, well, the next $100,000 one is for engineering salary and wages. Uh, we had a few employees that we didn't originally anticipate bringing on as full time staff, but uh, we had two of those and some disparity adjustments that we had to make. So we just want to account for those two. Um, Two full time uh, employees and you know any year end uh, deficits that we may run into. So that, well, everything else after that is under 100,000. So, so the engineering number is two full time employees who were not budgeted for initially. Is that they were originally they were seasonal employees to begin the year. So and I'll, I'll give you the names and uh, effective dates for those as well. OK. And just on the um, under expenditures for um, sanitation, the 650,000, you know, it, some of that, um, uh, you know, snow and, and if so, do we have to adjust it given the storm that's forecast for Wednesday, Thursday? Uh, no, we should. And we think first the snow removal contract should be encumbered for the end of the year. This okay. is a combination of other contracts that we just didn't have to draw down on throughout the year and I'll provide that breakdown as well. Could you some stuff, Councilman, that uh, you know we were able that we budgeted for that we were able to uh, uh, obtain through the CARES Act? Got it. Okay. Got it. Yeah. If you could, if you uh, on the under expenditures, instead of having us you go through one by one, but uh, uh, I could put this in writing too. But if you could just write a breakdown of, of how we got to those under expenditures on those um, uh, sanitation, automotive, fire, um, employee relations, engineering, that would be great. Yep. Uh, I have the specific line items that they're coming from, but I'll get you more detail from the uh, the fiscal officers there. OK, that'd, that'd be perfect. Thank you. I'd like to request that as well. I could get that. Um, Carl, may I you to send it to all the kids. Send it to Desiree and she can send it out to the whole council. All right, got it. Um, if, if I may ask uh, just a, a general question. Um, when you're doing transfers of within the same department, um, so if it's a DPW and you have uh, 
um, salaries and wages and you have operating expenses within within the director's office. Can you move operating expenses money over to the salaries and wages column without this transfer that we're doing right now or or is no. that something you can do on your own? No, we no it's statutory obligated that um, any legal line that uh, is represented in the adopted budget um, if you were to make a change to it, which is presented as salary wage in OE, um, has to be done through council action. So if, but you can move it within salaries and wages if it's all within the salary and wages line, but you can't move it. But, but I can't, yeah, I can't take money from a contract and pay somebody or vice versa. Yeah. Right. So, so I requested um, some time ago now, but um, maybe I should have just directed it to your office. I requested HR to provide me with information about uh, transfers, um, salary adjustments, anything like that that uh, has taken place over a certain period of time. I forget what the cutoff date was at the time. Uh, it was probably in November, I think, uh, when I made the request. Um, I I'm going to forward that request. I I'd still like to see that. Uh, does the year end at this point um, include, uh, I understand that there is a number of increases for folks, at least I've heard through the grapevine. Um, for, for hazard pay or merit pay, um, something to that effect. Uh, uh, can, can we can you provide us a breakdown and on those uh, those sort of allocations? Yeah, if you could just forward me that request, I'll make sure that we uh, we, we have somebody assigned to it. Great. Let's move on. Okay, we're all set. Alrighty, item ten point three, city. Resolution 20-838 is a resolution requesting a change in title, text, or amount of appropriation pursuant to NJSA 40A semicolon 4-85. Item 10.4, City Resolution 20-839, resolution to cancel current appropriation balances. Item 10.5, City Resolution 20-840 is a resolution providing for the financing of a special emergency appropriation of the City of Jersey City and County of Hudson, New Jersey by issuance of special emergency notes of the city. Item 10.6, Resolution 20-841 is a resolution authorizing the settlement of assessment appeals filed in the tax court of New Jersey various properties on various properties. Item 10.7, Resolution 20-842 is a resolution authorizing a second extension of a contract with Jersey City Bike Share LLC to construct, maintain, and operate a bike sharing system. Can you just, uh, what's going on here? Yeah. I'm sorry, can you repeat oh, the question? Because I don't I think you guys were talking at the same time. So my question is just a brief uh, description of, of what's going on with this extension of the contract. Thanks, Council. Hi, hi, Council members. Um, so we're we're still working through contract negotiations with Lyft on the award of the contract for bike share for the next five years. And as we're doing that, um, this is an extension of the term so that bike share can continue to remain active and the stations can remain active as they are throughout the city and city bike can continue providing the services while we're working out um, the new contract with Hoboken and Lyft. So this program would replace all the city bikes? Well, uh, so the selected vendor from the RFP was Lyft, uh, which is the company that acquired city bike. Um, and so once that contract is executed, City Bike would remain in place for us and Hoboken would also get City Bike. Uh, but we're just working through that contract, which includes a few other details with the addition of um, a second city that weren't in the previous contract. So City Bike will remain in place uh, for now while we work on on the new one. And we didn't expect the, the contract negotiations to take as long as they have. Unfortunately, it's been several months at this point. Um, so th this is just an extension of things remaining as they are uh, for this term for the next few months. Anyone else? Okay, Sean. Okay, thank you. 
Um, item 10.8, resolution 20 843 is a resolution ratifying emergency contract award to document reprocesses of New York Inc. for the provision of document restoration services for the city of Jersey City. Item 10.9, resolution 20 844 is a resolution authorizing the payment of a claim submitted by document reprocesses of New York for the provision of document restoration services. Yeah, sorry, there was a, a claim here. I guess what was the reason for the claim? John McKinney, uh, you want to speak uh, on this? I can, unless you want to take it, Nick. I don't know here, but yeah, so what happened essentially was there was some personnel change ups towards the end of this contract. Um, and it ended right around the time that COVID came into place. So the old contracts, we would have just extended it because the work hadn't been completed. It would have been a simple change order, but because it expired, we can't technically extend it under the local public contracts law. These are cryogenically stored um, contracts, among other things. So there's still work that needs to be done to maintain them. So the claims are basically paying for the uh, the storage of the documents since the contract expired back in, I believe, uh, March or February. OK. Just as a. This uh, resolution has listed Brian Platt as a, as a project manager. We want to start updating that. Good point. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Thanks, John. Um, item 10.10, .10, resolution 20 845 is a resolution authorizing the award of a contract to Ara Roscoe for the purchase of SWAT team equipment for the Department of Public Safety, Office of Emergency Management through the New Jersey Cooperative Purchasing Alliance, Bergen County Corp. Um, I believe Greg Kearse, Director Kearse, um, sent out a memo um, and an email attached to his memo. This is one of them um, and his his explanation on this one is those, this resolution will support the issuance of a contract for the purchase of specialized hearing communication devices for the JCPD emergency services special operation teams for tactical operations funded through the 201 USC's grant. Any questions or comments? So it's just uh, just tactical head listening equipment or some kind of audio equipment. It's specialized hearing communication devices for the JCPD emergency services special operations teams for tactical operations funded. OK. OK. Item 10.11 resolution 20-846 is a resolution extending the term of the advisor advisory committee established pursuant to Jersey City Resolution 20-373 to review and report on the effectiveness of the Jersey City Police Department's policy and procedures and police enforcement and discrimination and propose amendments if necessary. Uh, this is just an extension on the committee because uh, when the government, when the governor did his uh, executive order and decreased the people that can meet inside, it kind of took the, it kind of, it kind of, it kind of put the, pushed the committee back. Let me say it that way, it pushed the committee back. And so now uh, we just need the extension because the committee had um, different people lined up to come present before the committee. So now we just have to pretty much uh, see how we have to go about that. And I know the holidays coming up. So next year, uh, the committee should be on track with the people who they would like to invite in or how we have to do that versus Zoom or whatever. So this is just the extension that's already in the resolution. We just asking for it now. Any questions? Okay, thank, thank you, you, Council President. Item 10.12, resolution 20-847, a resolution authorizing the city of Jersey City to enter into an agreement with Voices International Publications for Teen Mentorship 
services for in the Department of Health and Human Services. Any questions or comments? We have Director Flanagan here to answer any questions or comments. How did we, um, can, can you speak to how you determined uh, this vendor on this and? Uh... Uh, so this is the, um, the vendor that works with Tamika McReynolds. So um, when we moved to doing work online, they were, you know, one of the people that reached out to her and um, because we didn't have to go through a formal RFP process, we worked with them already in um, the summer to do the mentoring program. And then we decided that it was really important for us to continue this throughout the year. So this is the second contract um, to continue the work that we did that we started over the summer. They're, they've worked with us in the past um, in, I guess, recreation, and now this is under Health and Human Services as one of the components of Tamika's work in bridging the gap between youth and seniors at the Collier Center. Okay. No further questions. Okay. Thank you, Director Flanagan. Item 10.13, Resolution 20-848 is a resolution authorizing the waiver of the 20-day waiting period prior to the effective date of City Ordinance 20-105 pursuant to NJSA 40, semicolon 69A-181B, an ordinance amending Chapter 175, the food handling establishments to allow the farmers markets to operate year round. This is waiving the 20 days. Yeah, this is just so that we can keep the ones that are open um, throughout the year so that they don't have to shut down and then reapply. And then on June, uh, January 11th, when the new structure is open with cultural affairs, anyone that has already closed can reopen. But this is so we wouldn't have to shut down um, historic downtown Sid. Thank you, Director. Item 10.14, Resolution 20-849 is a resolution honoring Anthony Capiano. I may mispronounce that last name. I'm terrible with the pronunciations of those Italian names and Polish names, unfortunately, on his heroic act. Uh, Councilperson Solomon, are, are we looking to get um, Anthony on the line during the council meeting or? Yeah, that would that would be great if possible. We can uh do, double back and confirm and, and if it's more appropriate to do at the start or, or later um i know may, may be a long night so uh if we are able to get them i appreciate that okay so if we can just if i, I think you uh your aide actually um sent me an email from the last meeting but if you wouldn't mind just following up with her and just have her resend um his contact information for us and i'll confirm will, with the president Great. I'll confirm with the council president if uh, we can just re defer to that in the beginning of the meeting. Yeah, sure. We can do that. That'd be great. Great. Okay, great. Thank you both. All right. Item 10.15, resolution 20 850 is a resolution ratifying the emergency contract award to SAR Construction LLC for the purchase, construction, and delivery of parklets to provide social distancing to local restaurants due to COVID-19 for the Department of Administration, Division of Engineering, Traffic and Transportation. Item 10.16. Uh, yes, I, I have a question. So, so for these parklets, are they, uh, I guess, how are we, how is the city, I don't know, I guess, what is the city doing with the parklets and are we, offering them to businesses or rebuilding them ourselves and, and i just want to get a little better better understanding of the process here sure hi councilman um so this is uh awarding a contract to an external contractor who we hired to build parklets which started at the beginning of the pandemic when we had first rolled out the parklet program and it was offered to any businesses who at that time weren't able to um construct parklets themselves and assume the cost of the parklets themselves. So these have been deployed at a number of locations um, across the city uh, to those specific businesses. And uh, there's capacity to construct a few more to any who may need them. We don't expect that to happen now um, 
as we're in the winter season, but uh, that was the purpose of, of this award. And this award is, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. This is this retro and winter now. So so I I guess the question I have is, um, you know, if a business is interested in having a parklet and, you know, maybe, maybe it's not going to be in the next couple of months, but, but come March, they're interested in getting one set up. I guess what's the process for them to apply and reach out? And just roughly, I mean, how many, based on this award, can, can we uh, uh, construct across the city? Sure, so, so a number of them have been um, constructed already. We were a little bit delayed um, and, and had some issues getting this on the agenda, but because the businesses needed um, you know, the services to be rendered and the parklets to be built, uh, close to um, 12 or 15 have, of them have been built already uh, some, through this contract. And there was also another contractor um, that we had to bring on board to build additional parklets for, for various businesses. Um, I think, I believe there's capacity for um, maybe five more parklets through this current contract, but I can double check that for you before the council meeting. Um, and, and the process has been pretty informal to date. Um, as businesses fill out their parklet application, they can check something off that indicates whether or not they are able to assume the costs and responsibilities of installing the parklet themselves. If not, um, I work with them and my team works with them to offer some sort of relief. In some cases, the businesses are able to build the structure. They just don't have uh, the various traffic safety uh, materials that are needed, such as uh, reflective markers or wheel stops. So the city has been offering those to them as DPW has them in stock. In other cases, they're not able to assume the cost for any of the required elements and they need the entire thing installed for them. And in that case, we use this option uh, where the contractor is, is building the structures entirely for the business. And the reason we had to do this was that um, there was quite a bit of demand from businesses who weren't able to do this themselves and we didn't have the capacity in-house uh, for, for the city's carpenter or the city's DPW team to be doing this, uh, which is why we had to hire an external contractor. Got it, okay, great, thanks. Sure. Any other questions or comments? Um, just on the, um, the, the current uh, the park, can you update us just on where the parklets are with, uh, that were cited with uh, potential violations and uh, having 14 days to comply and so forth and where that is? Uh, I, I wouldn't be the best person to speak to that. Um, Councilman Lavaro, the, the city agencies that have some sort of enforcement capability have been taking the lead on that and, and the engineering division is not one of them. I, the latest I know is that um, the prosecutor's office, HEDC, uh, and the Fire Prevention Bureau are still working with the businesses to bring them into compliance, but they would have uh, more details about that. Okay. 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 Item 10.16, resolution 20 851 is a resolution authorizing an emergency contract to Business Furniture Inc. for the purchase, delivery, and installation of pre owned workstations for this, the City Hall basement for the Department of Administration Division of Engineering. Uh, who is using this? Uh, who's going to be stationed here? Councilman, this is for the uh, the various workstations that we're uh, constructing in the basement, and um, we went with the used contract because it was cost efficient uh, for the city. Um, we do have some uh, plans to social distance some of the existing um, offices with here within City Hall and, and uh, uh, other divisions. Um, so basically the way we're organizing is that the individual um, workspaces will be, you know, kind of uh, um replicas of each other um and then we'll install uh different individuals in there so um it's basically to, to pull apart some of these uh more dense uh densely populated offices and, and bring them into workspaces uh that are identical 
in uh, socially distanced. So, so you haven't determined who's going to be occupying we, this? We, we have identified uh, you know, some of the offices that are more dense than the others. Uh, we just haven't put them particularly in the workstations okay. in the basement. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. Next item. Uh, I yield to the rest of my time. Okay. Item 10.17, resolution 20-852. It's a resolution authorizing an award of a contract to business furniture, Inc for the purchase, delivery, and installation of new office furniture for City Hall basement for the Department of Administration, Vision of Engineering through Omnia Cooperative Contract. Okay. So, so if I may ask, um, the previous contract was an emergency contract. This one is not. Uh, I assume the emergency contract is covered by CARES dollars. And this one is going to be some operating dollars, I believe, or capital dollars. I'm yeah, sure. correct, Councilman. This is a more permanent um, work work uh, space um, materials that that we would purchase for, for you know just as if we were purchasing it in normal times. Uh, the other stuff was used and and kind of um, just put together for the social distancing uh, measures. And this one not. Not for social distancing. Right, this would be like a, a conference table uh, that we will use long term. Uh, you know, just just an example. Yep. But, uh, operating dollars as opposed to say capital dollars. Um, it will be operating dollars unless uh, there was an opportunity to uh, to re regain it through FEMA at, at least. Okay. Yep. Right, I yield the rest of my time. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Um, item 10.18, resolution 20-853 is a resolution ratifying the emergency contract award to gold type machine, business machines for the purchase and delivery of personal protection equipment due to the coronavirus for the Department of Public Safety Office of Emergency Management, Homeland Security. This is also part of the memo that was sent by Director Kearse. Uh, regarding this resolution, this resolution will support the issuance of a contract to gold type business machines to provide PPE KN95 masks for use by city employees and first responders funded through the COVID care grant program. Any questions or comments? Go ahead. Okay, item 10.19, resolution 20-854 is a resolution ratifying the emergency contract extension to rapid reliable testing LLC to provide COVID-19 tests to Jersey City residents as part as part of the city's ongoing response to the coronavirus ep epidemic. Item 10.20, resolution 20-855 is a resolution of the Municipal Council of the City of Jersey City urging the U.S. Senate to enact the Restaurants Act. Item 10.21, resolution 20-856, resolution authorizing the business administrator to execute discharge of mortgage affecting real property located at 80 Storms Avenue. <clears throat> Excuse me. Item 10.22, resolution 20-857, resolution appointing Mary Watson as the fire official of the Department of Public Safety, Division of Fire and Emergency Service, Bureau of Fire Prevention. So, um, I, I know that uh, this, this came before us previously and that there was some, some open issues and questions. Am I, is that all resolved at this point? And um, I know some other, some council people may have been more directly engaged on this than, than I was, but can anyone speak to that? Anyone's here <clears throat> from public safety? I'm not sure anyone's here, Council President, but uh, if we have any questions, we could yield to them and they could respond in writing before we uh, approve this on Wednesday. Okay. All right. Okay, um, item 10.23. <clears throat> Excuse me, resolution 20 858 is a resolution appointing Susan Justiniano as the poet laureate of the city of Jersey City for 2021. I believe we have, <clears throat> I apologize, my voice. I believe we have Susan on the line. Um, 
for any questions or comments that you may have for Susan, um, council members. Susan, can you identify yourself for the record? <clears throat> Hi, this is Susan Justiniano. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions or comments for Susan? No. Who's your poetic okay. inspiration? What's that? Who's your poetic inspiration? <laughs> That's a great question. Well, there are several of them, um, and it spans depending on the type of poetry. So at present, I'm uh, really into some local poets out of Newark and here in Jersey City. Okay. Any ones that are, oh, sorry, any notable ones that you want to mention or uh, any, anything that as a council <laughs> we could read up on during the uh, holidays? Uh, well, actually, you could. There are a few. Um, I did um, most recently discover some writings from a Japanese poet, and uh, they're quite beautiful and very elegant. Um, and hold on a second, let me just get the. There's one actually. She's a Chinese poet. Uh, her name is Frances Wong. You might want to check her out. And also, there's a couple of other ones. Um, a Spanish poet called. A vodka, A V O T C J A. So that's definitely a poet you might want to check out. Also, um, Al Robles from San Francisco. Um, so these are just like local contemporary poets uh, that have really made an impact on the community and on the literary arts. Nice, thank you. Um, Anyone else? Just a um, com uh, request, uh, um, Suzanne, congratulations. I'm sure you'll be appointed on Wednesday and um, you'll have my board as well. Uh, I'm sure you're incredible as a poet, um, uh, but, but the council didn't receive any information in terms of a bio or anything like that. Uh, can we ask the administration for any information about that uh, just with regard to Ms. Uh, Justiniano's uh, background? Um, I did submit my uh, my CV and my resume to Christine of Cultural Affairs, but just give okay. you a little bit of information about me. I am uh, I've been a resident of Jersey City since 2006. Um, I am part of I was part of the Jersey City Arts Council for two years as treasurer. I'm currently serving on uh, Info Color as a board member, as okay. well as several arts organizations. Um, I've been writing poetry since the age of nine and performing since 2006. Um, most of my poetry is recorded and put to music, although I do have some published poetry. Some recently came out. Um, in 2019, I had a, pub, a poem published in the Info Color five-year um, uh, five book, so that's out and available uh, here in Jersey City. Um, I have performed internationally uh, as well as domestically. I performed in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Boston, uh, Philadelphia, um, California, Chicago, um, Florida, Amsterdam, the UK, and um, I, perform, um, I perform in two languages, English and Spanish. And um, I've been a community organizer since I fell in love in Jersey, in love with Jersey City and I've been here ever since. Okay. But if you need additional information, I'm happy to send my CV to whoever requests it. Desiree, um, reach out to Christine and have Christine forward her information to us because she already gave it to Culture Affairs. So reach out to her and have her just send us a bio and everything, okay? Yeah, and just for the record. Oh, Desiree, I, I actually have copies of it, so I just forwarded it to you. Okay, right. yeah. thank you. And just for the record, I'm not, uh, I'm certainly not questioning your, your credentials there. Just it just wasn't available for us. So, so uh, I'm looking forward to your you. uh, to your sir, you serving as the poet laureate for Jersey City. Yeah, as am I. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Hey, thank you, Susan. Okay, okay item 10.24, resolution 20 859 is a resolution authorizing the award of a contract to hand and floor covering corp for cleaning, repairing, and restoring the first floor of City Hall under state contract for the Department of Administration, Division of Engineering. 
Item 10.25, Resolution 20 860 is a resolution authorizing the award of a contract to Hannon Floor Covering Corp to install floor finishes in the City Hall basement, new office space due to COVID 19 under state contract with the Department of Public Works. Can I just say, um, it was just brought to my attention for the record. I, I do know so, Susan. I just know you as your stage name, which is Rescue Poetics. So congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, for Susan. All right. Item 10.26, 10, 10 resolution 20 861. It's a resolution ratifying the awarding an emergency contract to DMJ Industrial Services for various steel materials for City Hall basement for the Department of Administration Division of Engineering. Item 10.27, Resolution 20 862 is a resolution directing that Ordinance Number 20 101, an ordinance of the City of Jersey City, providing for the special emergency appropriation of 13 million, um, which take what want, we want it to take effect immediately. So this is basically waiving the 20 day period on City Ordinance 20 101. Um, item 10.28, Resolution 20 863 is a resolution authorizing the renewal of an open ended contract with Control Services LLC for snow removal with the Department of Public Works Division of Sanitation. Item 10.29, Resolution 20 864, it's a resolution authorizing the renewal of an open ended contract with Ken's Marine Services Inc. for salting and plowing for the Department of Public Works Division of Sanitation. Item. So, can, I, can I just um, interrupt, uh, Council President? I just uh, these, these snow these snow contracts reminded me. I don't know if Bark is still around. Just wondering if that contract with the uh, the parklets, if that's just if we were just paying out by by the work being provided, meaning if they build a parklet, then we're paying them, as opposed to they're they're under contract with us and we're just paying them every month. Uh, Councilman, I don't think she's here, but uh, it's definitely not like a, a retainer type. It's uh, it, it's per uh, per construction. Great. OK, yeah. thanks. All right, Sean. OK, item 10.30, resolution 20-865 is a resolution ratifying the emergency contract award to Adeline U.S. Northeast LLC for the disinfecting of various city buildings for the Department of Public Works Division of Building and Street Maintenance. Ten, item 10.31, resolution 20-866. It's a resolution ratifying the emergency contract to Ferguson Enterprises for pipe fitters for the heating system of radiators in the new city hall office space for the Department of Public Works. Item 10.32, Resolution 20-867, a resolution ratifying emergency contract award to Ferguson Enterprises for the pipe fitters for the heating system at City Hall, new office space for the Department of Public Works. Item 10.33, Resolution 20-868, it's a resolution ratifying the emergency contract award to 8 Plus Glass and Metal LLC for the interior glass at City Hall basement new office space for the Department of Public Works. Item 10.34, resolution 20-869, is a resolution authorizing the award of a contract to Jewel Electric Supply Company for the purchase and delivery of electric supplies for the City Hall basement project due to COVID-19 under state contract for the Department of Public Works. Item 10.34, go ahead. Can I just ask, the administration um, just sort of put together the, the total costs for the uh, basement rehab project and uh, how much of that is COVID uh, reimbursed. My understanding is most of it is, but if, if you guys just put that together, because I know there have been a number of resolutions, so it'd just be nice to have them all in one place. Yeah, sure, Councilman. So, uh, you know, the mechanism to obviously award these contracts is that we have to do it uh, in these splintered uh, fashion, but we could definitely put a cumulative uh, report together. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Item 10.35, resolution 20 870. It's a resolution ratifying the award of an emergency contract to air break and equipment for the rental of vans for the metal on, for, excuse me, for the meal on wheels program due to COVID 19 for the Department of Public Works. 
Item 10.36, Resolution 20-871 is a resolution of the Municipal Council of the City of Jersey City authorizing the acceptance of a grant from North Jersey Transportation Planning Authority and New Jersey Institute of Technology for the fiscal years 2021-2022 Subregional Studies Program for the Development of an Alternative Transportation Modes Assessment. Uh, can I just ask? Here? Yeah, yeah make sure to uh, explain, I guess, what the grant will be used for. Mm -hmm. John, is someone here to explain this? Uh, I'm, I don't believe so. Um, I could definitely have them uh, write, a, write a response, though, uh, basically summarizing uh, what it's for. We can go back and forth on that. Send it to all of us? Yeah, yeah, of course. It'll go to the. Uh, Right. It, it'll go to Desiree and then disseminate it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and John, just to add a little context, I, I was looking for it, it said alternative modes to transportation, right. but I didn't I didn't get any specifics in reading through the document. So I mean, are they studying e-scooters? Is it you know they mentioned aviation and maritime? I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to speculate. Could they start sure, a little sure. more? Yeah, of course, of course. Counsel. What what exactly they're 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 studying and like what Correct. what the end product Correct. is going to look like? What the scope is? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, hovercraft, I don't know, you know. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> okay, item 10.37, resolution 20-872. It's a resolution authorizing the acceptance of a grant from the United States Environmental Protection Agency for the cleanup of the Mill Creek site, part of the Grand Jersey redevelopment area and the execution of a cooperative agreement. Item 10.38, Resolution 20 873 is a resolution of the City of Jersey City authorizing the circulation of the preliminary official statement and final official statement in connection with the sale of certain bond anticipation notes of the city and providing a continuing disclosure undertaking with respect to said notes and authorizing and or ratifying the actions and connections therewith. Item 10.39, Resolution 20-874 is a resolution rejecting all bids received by the City of Jersey City on November 5th, 2020 for a contract known as Engine Company 10 and Ladder 12, New Firehouse Project Number 2018-004. Item 10.40, Resolution 20-875 is a resolution authorizing an emergency contract award to Roll and Thrones LLC to repurpose two decommissioned school buses as mobile health units as part of the city's ongoing response to the coronavirus epidemic. Item 10.41, Resolution 20-876 is a resolution ratifying the award of an emergency contract to Fix Tech Medical USA Inc for the purchase and delivery of six mobile boots to provide COVID-19 vaccination sites for the Department of Health and Human Services. Item 10.42, Resolution 20-877 is a resolution authorizing the execution of a mortgage, mortgage subordination agreement affecting the property known as 16 Virginia Avenue in Jersey City. Council President, can I take a step back? Go ahead. On vaccinations, um, we don't have to have that discussion today, but uh, perhaps um, Director Flanagan and uh, Dr. Pistola can provide us with a, an update um, or some sort of um, uh, understanding or report of how vaccinations will proceed in Jersey City given these these uh, purchases, um, how it's all going to roll out from the city side. Okay. I'll reach out to. Uh, Director Flanagan and see when she can. Great. Okay. okay. Alrighty. Item 10.43, resolution 20 878 is a resolution of the Municipal Council of the City of Jersey City authorizing the acceptance of COVID 19 CARES Act funds for the housing opportunities for persons with AIDS grant and authoriz authorizing program contracts under the program year. April 1st, 2020 through March 31st, 2022. Item 10.44, resolution 20-879. It's a resolution ratifying an 
ratifying awarding an emergency contract to Blue Track Inc. for the purchase and delivery of three surgical masks due to COVID-19 residents throughout the city for the Department of Administration Division of Innovation Team. Item 10.45, Resolution 20-880. It's a resolution authorizing the award of a contract to Lorman Supply Company for self-contaminated, excuse me, self-contained breathing apparatus, parts, and supplies under the under state contract of the Department of Public Safety Division of Police. Item 10.46, Resolution 20-881 is a resolution ratifying the emergency contract award to Gold Type Business Machine for the purchase and delivery of personal protection equipment due to the coronavirus for the Department of Public Safety, Office of Emergency Management, and Homeland Security. Council members, the last this is the last item on Director Kearse's memo. This resolution will support the issuance of a contract to Gold Type Business Machines to provide PPE face mask and decon suits, decon suits for the use by Jersey City first responders funded through the COVID care grant program. Someone just um, explain to me what a decon suit is. Hi, council members. Uh, the decon suits are, are the uh, hazmat suits. Hazmat, okay. Thanks. Thank you, Melissa. Item 10.47, resolution 20-882 is a resolution ratifying the emergency contract to Fix Tech Medical USA Inc. for the purchase and delivery of personal protection equipment due to COVID-19 for the Department of Administration Bureau of In Innovation. Item 10.48, resolution 20-883 is a resolution authorizing the award of a contract to Public Service Electric and Gas Company in connection with facility modification on Central Avenue Streetscape Phase 1 lighting project number 18-017-E for the Department of Administration Division of Engineering. Item 10.49, resolution 20-884. It's a resolution amending a professional service agreement with law firm of Eric M. Bernstein and Associates to serve as special counsel to represent the city of Jersey City in tax appeals. Item 10.50, Resolution 20-885. It's a resolution authorizing the award of professional service contract to Mazer Consulting PA in connection with the design, construction, documents, and LSRP services for COVID-19 Memorial Skyway Park Project Number 2020-027 for the Department of Administration Division of Architecture. Just a quick question. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's a great idea, um, a memorial park, a memorial for COVID victims. Um, just, just curious with uh, the consultant, uh, obviously we were still in the middle of second wave as, it's, I, I hate to say it, but we're gonna end up with more fatalities as, um, as this continues on. Um, will this uh, um, contract essentially incorporate all of that or as, as a result or um, for our, are we limited? We're not. We're not limited in this contract. The design could be uh, amended if, if, um, if we needed to add additional trees or features that would be included in this contract. Okay. Is there a limit to the, the amount of additions? Uh, because we don't know what the future will bring here. Not in this. Not the nuance that you're um, asking about would be covered. Certainly, we, we can add another portion of the park, right? Um, but uh, design features uh, are open to iteration. Okay. Okay. Item 10.51, Resolution 20-886 is a resolution authorizing the settlement of Valerie, excuse me, Montone versus the City of Jersey City. And John A. Strop. Clyde Banks, James Buckley, William Colonini, Richard DeStefano, David Labruno, Izo Skirbo, John Whalen versus the City of Jersey City. I may be mispronouncing some of the names. Somebody have a question? It's okay, Sean. I think we misspelled some of the names there, and I apologize for that. Uh, at any rate, I, I did circulate a uh, memo to the council. I sent it to Desiree. Uh, did the council receive that? 
Uh, okay. Uh, Councilman uh, if anybody, has, if anybody has any questions, uh, feel free to reach out um, mm -hmm. before Wednesday, and I'm happy to uh, help you with that. This has been going on for years, and it should be settled and finished. That's uh, that's that's the idea, Councilman. Mm -hmm. And uh, Corporation Council, if you can just uh, provide me with the correct spellings, and I'll have that corrected for Wednesday. Sure, I'll get that to you. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Okay, and the last item, item 10.52, resolution 20-887. It's a resolution authorizing the right of what right of entry agreement with New Jersey Department of Transportation to enter onto city-owned property known as Block 11702, lots four and five near Route 1 and 9, Pulaski Skyway, and the PJP landfill east of Sip Avenue, Ditch, Jersey City. Any questions or comments on any of those items? All right. May I have a motion to adjourn at 5.58 p.m.? Motion. Motion made by Councilperson Rivera. May I have a second? Second. 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 Ooh, Councilperson Delay was quick on that one. <laughs> Councilperson Soleil. On the motion to adjourn at 5.58 p.m., all council members by acclamation, please say aye. 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 We are out of here at 5.58 p.m. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, members of the public. Thank you so much, council members, council president, and members of the city council, and all behind the scenes, especially my staff, making this all possible and making this happen. And remember, members of the public, when you're out and about, please remember to wear that mask. It's so important, especially during this second wave. We are not out of the woods yet, but please be safe, stay safe, and God bless. Good night. Yousef, if you get a chance later, give me a call.